Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. Can you guess what this video is going to be? It's going to be another installment in my moon hopping series where I'm here at Jupiter and we're hopping down from the, we're hopping all the way from the farthest moon, which is Callisto, down to Ganymede, which is where we're at right now. We're on our way to Europa, then we're going to go to Io, and then we're done. In the uh, last video, the very one, the last one preceding this one, we set up our plan here at uh, Ganymede to head off to Callisto using the target intercept program. Got everything all dialed in, kind of figured out when the best time to leave would be. And if we did our planning correct, then uh, we pretty much found the very best uh, DV solution. It's, it's possible that we could get even a little bit lower if we really played around with it. And if I, if I weren't recording videos, I certainly would. But, it, you know, there's a time where you just kind of have to say, yeah, this is good enough. We're going to take it. We also set up the surface launch program in the uh, previous video so that we're ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and switch camera views. So all we have to do now is lift up off the landing pad and take off. And I decided that instead of waiting to 3600 that we're going to start, uh, we're going to try TEJ 5000. I just seem to remember in the back of my mind somewhere Dimitri telling me that 5000 seconds was about the right time to go. And I know when I got up off of Callisto, and got into orbit, I somehow managed to leave. Either either I left a little bit too early or perhaps a little bit too late, I'm not sure which, but in any case, we're going to try 5,000 seconds this time. Before we go on, let's check our notes and just see that we are, that we've covered everything. So we've done, we've done that, we've done that, we've set the orbit, we've set the target altitude, and we've done all that. Now when we're ready to launch, uh, just launch per the usual method and use surface launch program as your guide to determine your launch heading and to help you stay on target while getting into orbit. Uh, what I mean there is after you take off, you will have a relative inclination in surface launch MFD. Actually, it's not surface launch MFD. In IMFD's surface launch program, I need to be just more clear on that. After you take off, you will have a relative inclination in IMFD surface launch program. Use that as your guide. So that's going to be our EIM. And let me just actually change that here. You will have a relative inclination in, in IMFD surface launch program. It's the it's the EIM value. Just to be clear that so that people aren't looking for RINC like we have everywhere else. And use that as your guide. Okay, so that's the next thing. And then once we achieve orbit, we'll do that. But first of all, let's let's take off. Alright, so we're gonna have a heading of 51.6, and uh, that's almost behind us. So which way's better? I'm actually not sure which way I should rotate. Let's see 270. All right, let's think about this. So if we go 290 minus 50, then we have to rotate 240 degrees. That's longer, so we need to go to the right. Okay, so just uh, check everything out. Quick sanity check. Make sure we're not forgetting anything. If we are, we'll buy it along the way. Rotation. Go to rotation. And we'll bring up... Uh, we'll have retro doors open just in case we make a mistake and overshoot our target altitude. Of course we won't do that because we're really good pilots. Bring up uh, Orbit MFD or you can have surface, uh, surface MFD. They're both pretty handy and if I when I do my own flying off camera I have a whole slew of, I, video, of MFDs open on my second monitor so I would have all these open but um, for the initial for the initial hover process it can be a little bit better to have uh, surface up Okay, so time is at uh, real time, so let's hover. And we're hovering. Raise the landing gear, and we need a 51 point, we wanted to go to the right, 51.6 degree heading, and it's good that, unlike Transex, IMFD continually gives you that information, because as soon as I lifted up, I couldn't remember what heading I had to go to. So if I were using Transex, I would have had to settle back down on the, on the landing pad just to see what heading I needed. Um, I'm overshooting. Oops. So 51.6 is going to be almost all the way to 52. Uh, probably right about there. 
Okay, get rid of a little bit of that hover, full power on the main. Now eliminate all the hover, pitch up a little bit. And the reason it's nice to have surface MFD up while you're initially getting into orbit is because you can see your vertical speed and your vertical acceleration. Right now we're going down, so we want to pitch back just enough to have a positive vertical uh, acceleration, and, and that'll eventually get our vertical speed. Actually, we need to pitch up a little bit more for now. That'll get our vertical speed back above zero. Now it's above zero, so we're happy. And I like to basically just keep the vertical speed, you know, really close to zero. Now, again, we want to watch our EIM. That's over here. That'll help us determine. That'll help us determine, uh, you know, whether or not we need to yaw left or right. Uh, once I have the initial hover and main engine engaged, I like to switch back over to orbit MFD. That's my preference. I just I'm more comfortable looking at this information, and uh, we can we can tell if we're going up or down. You know, for one, we've got the altitude readout there, and we also have the velocity vector. As long as the velocity vector is above the horizon, we know we're climbing. In fact, I don't want to climb too much, so I'm going to go ahead and pitch back down, and just watch that the velocity vector does not settle below the horizon. That's the only thing we need to do. EIN's kind of stalling there a little bit, so let's uh, let's yaw just a little bit to the right, see if that'll help or make it worse. Looks like it's making it worse. So a little bit to the left is helping. It's coming down a little bit more. Let's go a, bit, a little bit more to the left. So we don't have too much farther to go before we'll be at orbital velocity. Let's bring the uh, pitch all the way down to the horizon now. And let's get ready to yaw back to the right a bit. Okay, let's go start yawing to the right so we don't overshoot the uh, EIN. Okay, let's go all the way to the right. Ooh, that's... Okay, I overdid it. That always happens. Okay, now we just gotta watch the APA because if we get too distracted by the EIN, we'll end up with an orbital altitude of a million kilometers or something ridiculous. So watching the APA on orbit MFD on the right. Bring it up a little faster. And again, we're going for 30. Frustrated that my oh see I was looking over at the EIN and man, that's what happens. Translation. And we don't need to, but we can translate out that last little bit. All right, projection actually it doesn't matter because we're we're done with uh, surface launch MFD. So let's check our notes. Let's see what we have to do next because we don't know if we're if we're brand new to uh, all this. Then we are, we're just going down a checklist here and we don't know what to do next. So after achieving orbital velocity and reaching the target APA, check and check, bring orbit eject up on the side that had the surface launch program. We are done with the surface launch. We do not need it beyond this point. It's kind of redundant. Let's not have that in there. We are done with surface launch. Also note that when you bring up Orbit eject, it has to be shared with the course program on the other instance of IMFD. But since, uh, but this should already be the case since the surface launch program was shared with the course program. Okay, so here's what we're saying. On this side, we need to bring up the orbit eject program, but we want to make sure that this side is already shared with this side, and it is because the surface launch program had to be shared with this side. So let's bring up IMFD also over here and orbit eject and change the projection because I'm a fanatic about that. I'm also kind of fanatical about having proper, like it says, orbit hyphen eject. And so in my notes, it should say hyphen orbit, orbit hyphen eject. I will take care of this on my own time, but that's like obsessive compulsive stuff there. Okay, it has to be shared now. When you have orbit eject loaded, press plus or minus to have it use the course program because it defaults to higher orbit. And that is indeed the case. You can see it's defaulted to higher orbit. So we want course and we have course. Now optionally press the PRJ button to change the projection to self and I already did that. Now adjust the TIN from the target intercept program in order to bring the EIN down to 0 0.00 from the orbit eject program. Now that's a little that's a little confusing, I think, the way I worded that. But what we're saying, we want to adjust the TIN in the target intercept program. 
And the purpose of doing that is so that the, the EIN on this side appears to be 0, 0.00. It's really close to that right now. Oh my gosh. And we're actually so close to the time to see. We're probably, in this, in this case, we're actually going to go ahead. I think we're probably better off just going around one full orbit. And then coming back to the uh, to the eject point because we're just too darn close to the TEJ. All right, but what we're saying again, we want to adjust the TIN over here so that the EIN on this side appears to be zero. So back to real time, and I, we're going to go ahead and skip the ejection on this on this time just to show something a little bit different. In the last video, we got we got it to orbit and we were kind of really rushing the eject. So just to do it differently, we're going to show that you can go around, and that means we're also going to have to circularize our orbit. Speaking of orbit, let's switch to orbit HUD. Okay, so a 10x adjustment here, and again, I'm looking at the EIN. That's not what we want. That's not what we want. So adjustment down to 1, and that's what we want. And it's quite possible, actually, that... Um, once we go around a full orbit, we'll need to adjust the EIN again. So we might want to make note, make it part of our notes that only this really doesn't need to be adjusted until you're within a thousand seconds of the ejection. So let's kind of, uh, let's see what we have in our notes about that. So when we have orbit eject, okay, adjust the TIN using the target intercept program that's that's better just that simple change of word is better using the target intercept program in order to bring the EIN down in order to bring down the EIN on uh, in order to bring the EIN all right how do I want to word this In order to bring the EIN down to 0, 0.00, but note that you should look at the EIN on the orbit eject program and not the EIN on the target intercept program. The EIN in the orbit eject program is the one that we are trying to get to 0.00. .00. Right, that's It's still a little weird the way I'm wording it, but that's probably about as good as I can come up with. Um, also note that you should check the EIN when you are about a thousand seconds. Uh, let me say when the TEJ is about 1,000 seconds. If you adjust it really far in advance, it may not stay at 0.00, .00 by the time you reach the eject point. All right, that's good enough. So uh, again, we, we blew our opportunity for for doing the eject here, so we're just going to go around one more orbit. So we're going to say TEJ and plus plus until we go all the way around. And now we're going to watch the DV to, de to decide when we have the best uh, orbit eject. So down to 1. Actually, let's stay at 10 for now. Okay, so 29 I saw. Now down to 1. And it should be when that blue line's right there. See the blue line is right there at that point. That's going to be when the delta V is the lowest. Okay, and it is. Uh, and it doesn't matter, you know, if we're just a little bit before it or a little bit after it. Okay, so now the next step <coughs> is to get within, uh, uh, let's say, 1,500 seconds of the time to eject. And 
And let me make that part of the notes. Now, uh, let's see. So work time forward until you are within 1500 seconds of the TEJ. Did I have a note in here about the apoapsis? I did. I think that was all the way. Let me just double check. Okay, launch and then. Actually, I don't have that in here. So let's make a note of that. Once you're, okay, after achieving orbital velocity, okay. Okay, so let's add this note here. If you reach the eject point prior to apoapsis, then you don't need to circularize. Circularize. If you reach apoapsis prior to the eject point, it's paramount that you circularize your orbit. If you forget to do this, <laughs> you will likely crash and die. Okay, so that steps in there. So that's what we're we're kind of at this point now. So let's uh, let's do that. We're going to circularize. Let's bring up orbit MFD on this side, and we're uh, two thousand seconds out from circularization. So let's go around. And again, we'll do it manually. So prograde. I'm not going to do the fuel efficient method of getting to prograde. And we just need a second or two. Probably about there. A little bit of power. Rotation. Translation. And there we have it. We're circular. So then we would do that step. When we're when we're within a thousand seconds, because you can you can see as we go around the EIN slips a little bit. So I think I actually want to replace this. So after after circularization, warp time forward until you're within fifteen hundred seconds of the TEJ. So let's do that. Let's go faster. Farther. That's actually slipping a whole lot. So you can see why it's important to do another update. Okay, we're pretty close. So now let's bring up interplanetary over here. And we do have that as our next step, right? Yeah, adjust the TIN. Okay, let's go to 10. And now we've got the EIN back down to zero, basically. So adjustment. Yeah, that's that's a very important step to make sure that we don't make sure that we don't bother with the TIN until, or yeah, make sure we don't bother adjusting the EIN until we're much closer. And from the looks of things, it would be to our benefit to adjust again when we're at 500 seconds or something. So we'll, we'll make note of that. Okay, next step load the orbit eject program on the opposite side from where you had the target intercept program currently loaded okay so technically though we're not going to be able to adjust the TIN uh, yeah that's fine okay so now we're saying we want to load orbit intercept over here so now now we have orbit eject on both sides now on the side where you originally had the orbit eject program, press menu and then unshare it. So come over here, menu, unshare. Now, if you see the eject point is after apoapsis, then go to apoapsis and circularize your orbit. Okay, that's a misplaced step. 
because we already took care of that in the previous one. I, and it, I don't think that I, I knew I had that in my notes somewhere, but I guess I just didn't really have it in the best position. So now number three, if the TEJ is more than one orbit away from the time to eject, start by setting the TEJ to zero. Wait a minute, am I missing something here? Okay, actually this step might not... Yeah, I, I remember this. This is kind of a weird step that I'm not sure that it really valid is valid. Because we kind of took care of this already, but... Basically what I was saying is that, you know, if you're... If for some reason your TEJ ends up being 10,000 or something, 12,000, 15,000, then you need to basically reset it to zero and then just set your TEJ to the actual eject point here. You know what? I think our DV actually went up quite a bit since we're going around one more orbit. Seems to me like it was quite a bit lower than that, so I guess going around the extra orbit wasn't wasn't a good idea, but we'll commit to it. Now on the side that you previously unshared from step two, go to course and then load the delta velocity program and then press ref to reference the body that you're starting from. Okay, so over here that we just unshared, we're gonna go course, delta velocity, reference the body that we're starting from, Ganymede. Then press page to get to the other page of options and set your source as your vessel. Note, just type X and hit enter. Okay, so come over here. Source, X, done. And optionally press PRJ to change the projection to self. We'll definitely do that. Now copy the orbit eject plan over to the delta velocity program. Note that the en route DV is not necessarily all prograde. So here, uh, we want to copy this whole plan over to here. And I guess we can start by setting the TEJ. So let's do that. Set to 1320, enter. And now we want to put in the, uh, the delta velocity amounts. But uh, as we pointed out in the last hop, this number, this amount here, and that's also in my notes, this isn't necessarily all prograde. So, and then it's not necessarily positive either. So we want to see what it is. We'll go to page, burn vector, and we can see the breakdown. So we'll put it in, 1135.6, and set and note the next one is negative, so negative 12, and then the uh, DVI, 74.6. Let's check our notes. Uh, press the PG button and the BV to see the DV breakdown, which we did. And if the DVP and DVI are very low, you can just put it all in as a DV, as DVF. In this case, uh, that's enough that we probably want to put it in separately. This could potentially be just put in as zero, but it's obviously also constantly changing. So now load IMFD's map program on the side that has the orbit eject program and share it with the delta velocity program. So the orbit eject program is here. We want to load the delta velocity program on this side, but we want to share with this side first. I'm sorry, we want to load the map program on this side, but we want to share it first. So share with that, load map. Now what do we do? In IMFD's map program, press target to target the destination body. So let's target Europa. Turn off uh, bas basically all the buttons. So. Auto zoom off, I guess it already was, display on, page, SOI, plan, page back over, and Europe is already selected as our reference, but as a, if it wasn't, we would select it by doing that. Okay, what do we do next? Now, now adjust the TEJ, DVF, DVP, and DVI in the Delta Velocity program in order to get the PEA as seen in the as seen in IMFD's map program down to the surface. Start by adjusting the TEJ at 1x and then adjust the DVF at 1x. In many cases, you can get the PEA where you want with just TEJ and DVF. Note that when you adjust the TEJ to find the low point, it will go faster if you overshoot the time by a few seconds and then go adjust your DVF. If you just bring down the PEA to the low point and then go adjust the DVF, it'll take longer. So we know what we're doing here. 
Uh, we'll start with time. We want to make sure the adjustment's set to one, and we'll just see what plus does. That's helping. So we're just going to continue putting in plus until the PEA no longer counts down. And uh, now it's counting up a little bit, but we're going to overshoot a little bit in that direction. And now adjust DBF. And I'll show you something else we can try once we get this, So, because uh, we got time. So uh, now the, DV, the PEA hit the low point, and now we're going to overshoot a little bit to bring it back up, and then to go back to the time and just repeat, rinse, recycle, overshooting, 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 Keep going. It looks like we need to go quite a bit on the delta velocity. Now, time. Okay, and you can see we'll get there eventually. But what I want to see if I can, I want to see if I can get rid of all that DVI. So I'm going to set it to zero, just noting that it's uh, currently 74. So I'm going to set that to zero and just see now if I can adjust DVF and time and just and still get the PEA where I want it. So that's coming way down. Although, actually, now that I look at this, we may not want to do that because that's bringing, looks like that's bringing us in side the orbit quite a bit, and that means that our encounter velocity is going to be higher. I think that's actually our encounter velocity there. And it's going up, so let me actually go back and put that back to 74.6. See that? Shapes our orbit a little bit better, I think. Uh, but let's, so let's just try this again. But sometimes you can just eliminate the the plane change and or the DVI and just get it all with time and prograde. But you do want to kind of maybe keep an eye on your encounter velocity because um, the faster you're going when you get there, the more braking you're going to have to do. So PEA, let's uh, find the low point on the PEA. Okay, and prograde. And okay, I'm going to go back and forth. I'm almost at 30 minutes on this part of the video, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, since we do already have an example of all this in the previous hop, I'll go ahead and refine it off camera to get the PEA down to the surface. It'll just take a few more mouse clicks. So when we come back, we'll uh, be all set up, and then we're going to do the burn in just a little over 1,000, 1,100 seconds. If you like this part of the video, like it. If you didn't like it, don't like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed so you can be notified when I upload new Orbiter videos. Check for links in the description down below. Leave all your questions and your great comments in the comments area, and I always reply, so definitely if you have something on your mind, let me know and you'll hear from me. And I will see you in the next video.